Is Greg Doucette a bully? I tell her I don't blick ride, don't blick ride, leave it to the double thick thighs. I'm not exactly sure what all that means, but it sounded kind of cool. Assalamu alama, ayahakam, you big hater, hater clout chaser. Everyone says I'm a clout chaser, so maybe he's singing a song about me. Greg Doucette is a name you might know because he picks fights with just about everybody. I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely no one. Are you kidding me? Problem is, like, you have people on the internet, like Greg Doucette, like you can't believe that a girl can look like that. And so she's literally using an appeal to emotion. She talks about the fact that she's female. Oh, that coach Greg, you know, that guy, he's saying to women they can't build a physique like this. He's just like makes videos, YouTube videos, he gets views off of just saying like, Daniel Bailey's a liar. And this is empowering women? How am I supposed to show my body when people are criticizing her for having cellulite? I mean, compared to her, me at 300 pound woman, I feel great. Said no woman ever. When they asked women, do women need men? They said, no, no, we don't. Well, unfortunately, these women, they're not thinking clearly. They don't have any idea of the sacrifices, the things at length that men have gone to to make this world the way it is right now. And if women had to do all the jobs that men are doing they would think twice about their answer aside from food shelter clothing perhaps to survive do we really need men maybe not but we should want them I didn't say go and bully this woman i never said to anyone go and write her and tease her mm. and no one did yeah. but they sure as heck bullied me yeah I, which is cool for them they think that's okay <laughs> of course which of doesn't course. bother me i don't have an opinion on greg beyond the fact that he's a funny meme i'm a dumb meme now really a dumb meme last i checked i have two plus million followers. You have 200 something thousand followers. I almost have a billion views on YouTube, doing exceptionally well, both financially, spiritually, socially, physically, everything. How am I a meme? Last I checked, I have two plus million followers. You have 200 something thousand followers. I almost have a- <laughs> He's cooking Hasanami Productions. Bro's coming after a fan channel. Oh no. Oh no. Greg isn't shy when it comes to commentary. He, like me, uses other other people's real life stories to have a larger conversation. I mean, I'm doing it right now using Greg as an example to have a larger conversation. So on his channels, he focuses on fitness and on my channel, we focus on self-improvement and philosophy. Our bubbles sort of overlap in a very interesting way. I'm also somebody who's on the beginning steps of my fitness journey and I do come across Greg's content a lot because I watch a lot of the fitness gurus that he knows. You in your past were a former steroid dealer. Yes. Why do you want to even talk about this on the internet? Well, honestly, I, I want people to know about the dangers of this and how common it is and, and being somebody that used to sell it. I, people think it's just bodybuilders. It's yeah. everybody. What was the most dangerous part of selling them? Honestly, at the time, I wasn't really worried about anything aside from getting caught. Like there was okay, nothing okay. that I was worried about and you're selling to your friends. So I'm like thinking, well, what's going to happen? It's just my friends. I know everybody. It's not like I'm having an online business. I'm selling to strangers. So. I mean, it's like, it's your buddy. Okay, hi, that makes hi sense. buddy, you yeah. want some? Okay, so other than just getting caught, I didn't really have any worries. And then once you got caught, were you like arrested? Yeah, came in my room five in the morning, five no guys, way. handcuffs, doors. No way, down. like, oh yeah, it's, it's holy serious. crap. Yeah, absolutely. I lost my career as a school teacher. I'm lucky enough that I was able to get famous on YouTube to be able to do the coaching to keep going. Cause wow. for a while I'm sitting on cardboard boxes, like literally, I have nothing. I owe money, I have huge fines. I'm like, what am I gonna do? I also have a few people in my life that like Greg as a content creator. Greg does give objectively good information here, albeit quite simple, by telling people not to abuse caffeine and pre-workouts. But that doesn't stop the top comment of the video being clickbaiting hard Harder than last time. Why everybody hates Greg Doucette. So why don't I like him? And so you really think everybody hates Coach Greg? Let's assume that was true. Even if it's true, what did that say about society? We hate him because he has a screechy voice. We don't like his voice. He's too short. We hate him because he tries to make a living by selling his supplements. Why do I find myself feeling a negative way about him? I have brought the world's most judgmental fitness influencer, Greg Doucette, to the judgment-free zone of Planet Fitness. And why do I think he's a bully? You think just being in a fat body and being in the public space encourages obesity? Yes. How would you agree, like, looking at his physique? Like, he's at a perfectly, I would say, maybe healthy... No. You think 
He's definitely overweight, definitely obese. Greg is somebody who's very accomplished and educated. Mostly it's men who dominate the sporting world in, in schools. You'll see yeah. the female participation rate drop off. Yeah. This is what I did my master's on that topic. So oh, what? I was like, I really want the women to be able to love sports because by grade 10, 11, and 12, if you're a teacher, you'll see hardly any girls take phys ed. Yeah. It's because the men are the loud kids in the class. Let's do dodgeball. Let's do football. And it's like the girls are like, they're not going to say, let's do ballet. Yeah. So yeah. I'm like, we're doing ballet. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, they have to like it. You have to want to do it the way I do it. Because it's easy for us because we love it. He's worked with children and adults. He's somebody who's very forthcoming with his problems. You were abusing steroids and you don't speak on it as though it was the best mental health time in your life. So how do you juxtapose like being in peak physical form and having mental health sort of not directly correlated to how fit you are? You know, I feel like uh, being morbidly obese and abusing steroids to me is equal in terms of like the 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 negatives, like the the effect of your life. Yeah. And so I'll say I was abusing steroids for 10 years. I don't brag about that. I did that. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to short my life. And so I feel like I can speak to this with more, I don't know, more authority than the average person. And his solutions. What motivates me? Jeez, that's a great question. I don't I don't know if I, I think it's more so I just love to do it. And sure. if I don't do it, I, I, I miss it. You and I have always a whole lot of exercise. So to try to think of like someone who never has, like why are you motivated to come to the gym? So well, I just do. I, I just do. I was a phys ed teacher and so I appreciate that, that that comment. It means a lot to me because the kids that I saw in class, all I wanted was for them to like one sport the way I do about all sports. Yeah. That's my goal. So when I would go into kids in great primary, I was like, I get to get these kids to love being active. He's somebody who is deeply wounded and talks about that often. Because I'm thinking, why are you staying there? But they're like, I'm scared of this or I'm that, or they've been beaten down or their self-esteem, their self-worth has diminished so, so much that they just tolerate it. Have you ever been in a place like that in your life where you, you're, you've been, you know, sort of tolerant of something that you shouldn't have been? Absolutely. Many times. You're Man, I've been in coach. so many bad relationships. If I said every story in my relationship, like I'll just name a couple. This girl, she says, when I break up with her, she says, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. Really? <laughs> but you didn't you get the needle? And you're like, didn't, aren't you like needle for like, you can't get pregnant? I'm like, what were you doing in Florida drinking and partying? You're pregnant? She calls up my mom. I'm 30 something. Okay. She's like, you know, Greg got me pregnant and dumped me. So my mom's not talking to me and she's making up this lie. And then I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what to do. So I'm like, maybe she is pregnant. I don't know what to do. So I move out and then I go to my house to, to, to get to my stuff and the door locks are all changed. And I'm like, what's going on? I call the police. And apparently she said, oh, he's, he's saying he's threatening to kill me and, and whatnot. So I'm like, okay, so this, <laughs> yeah. So this woman makes up this story. And then Wait, how long were you with this person? I was a year. I bought a oh. house with her of which I put all the money into it. I ripped off by so many people in my life. It's unbelievable. I've been a powerlifting meet in PI in a different province. And then I come back and I'm getting arrested for robbing the house. I'm like, what do you mean I robbed the house? My house? And they claim that I'm the one that robbed it. Two months later, they find it in her brother's basement in his brother's garage. So this is like one example of what I go through. And she made up the whole pregnancy just to me. So this is like a relationship that I'll have. That's just one example of one of many. He'll even have moments where he'll point out that people do make fun of him for his voice or his height. Why everybody hates Greg Doucette. From complaints about his voice. And so he says three main points, the voice. I get it all the time, but yet that's what you like. And even when I poll people see, do you want me to just do with a different voice? Many people know, keep the voice, we like it. I scream at you, I get you motivated, amped up. You get more energy than last time. It's like getting a pre-workout before you go to the gym. Picture this, let's say that was my real voice, that that's the only way I could speak. You're really gonna hate me because of the way I talk? Something that perhaps I could do nothing about? It would be like hating me because I'm a manly. I'm five foot six inches tall. I hate Coach Greg. Do you know why? Because he's five foot six. He's a manlet. He's a short king. I hate him because of his height. Imagine saying that. But yet people do. That freaking short little manly with a bad voice. I hate him. Listen to his voice. I hate him. And I think he's right in some regard that people shouldn't be making fun of people for this. But he forgets one key thing. That bullying a bully feels pretty good. And since he appears to be a bully and that's what he's known for, it kind of gives people permission to bully a bully. You're going to hate someone because of the sound of their voice. That would be just as bad, if not worse, than judging someone for their appearance. 
parents. I hate that person because they're overweight. I hate you because you're fat. Imagine saying that. Imagine a horrible person saying that. When I see somebody who's five or 600 pounds, all I can think of is, why do they care so little about their health that they can do this, allow themselves to gain that much weight, knowing it's taken 20, 30, 40 years off their life? I just can't imagine not wanting to live that badly. I don't think there's anyone that can look at somebody five, 600, 700 pounds and not think, wow, what have they done? And not be disgusted. Like, how can you not? Now, with that said, of course, we're going to look at the nuance of this. Are there certain types of people that we're allowed to bully and other types of people we aren't allowed to bully? You've probably heard of the concept of punching down. And some people feel like Greg does this. I feel like he only actually does it on occasion. Most of the time, he is sort of punching equal or up to other content creators who also have big followings. But he does tend to pick fights with just about everybody. I don't know. It's just crazy. I just don't understand how this guy has so many views and followers. I don't get it. Maybe it's because he doesn't scream and shout so much like me. Remember, you can still make amazing results without any equipment from your house with the proper nutrition, workouts, and workout programs. You're gonna look awesome so soon. Yes, it's so great. I'm so positive, you know, and I just speak and you just like it because if you do what I do, you're gonna look like me. So whether you're a female or whether you're like watching my YouTube videos, you're drawn to somebody that has the confidence to just not give a about what anyone else is saying and just do your own thing. Why do you think it's hard for people to get that though, to have that? Why is it hard to do like that? How because, people are, that? because people are afraid to be their authentic selves because you've been being judged. So for example, when Jeff Nippard makes a video, it's never his own opinion. You know who Jeff Nippard is? Yeah, I've, I've He's seen He's one him, of the yeah. guys that hates me the most offline. So he hates me, despises me. So when he makes videos, he's a very good YouTuber. So I give him compliments on what he's good. He's good at making YouTube videos, but it's never his own opinion personally of what he thinks. So he puts out, the research says this, this meta-analysis is that, these research is that, that guy decided this. That, so if anyone criticizes the message, they're not criticizing him, they're criticizing the message. I will say, I think this, I think that women want this, I believe. And so if I get criticized, it's me. And so yeah. that's on me. So that's really being in a vulnerable position. How do you feel about natty or not videos? <laughs> All right, I'll take this one. From the creator's standpoint, I think they're overrated because I believe in innocent until proven guilty. And if you're just speculating on someone's natural status on scant evidence, then you could be hurting their reputation. From the viewer's standpoint, I don't think they actually give you any value apart from just the fun of the drama, I guess, because the idea is that, oh, if they're not natty, then it's not realistic for me to look like them. But you can't really look like anyone else anyway genetic because of genetic surfing. differences, right? Yes. So I think that from both the creator standpoint and the viewer standpoint, super overrated. Yeah, the only thing I'll say is I think true natty or not journalistic approach where someone who has made a real commitment to being drug free and is lying about it, I think that's awesome. Exposing those frauds is yeah. a great thing. But natty or not videos are like when you've done zero research, you're just yelling at the camera and pretending you know things that you don't about anyone. And by the way, for context, I'm not natty. Okay, Just in case okay. anyone wanted to say anything. Fair enough. And because he picks those fights and leans into the reputation of him being a bully, it sort of amplifies that negative feeling I get when I watch him. Now that I have done a deep dive on Greg Doucette, I've learned so much about him. And some things I like... What do you believe in in terms of, like, just the overall un universe? Like, do you believe... Do you have a religion you associate with? I was raised Catholic my entire life, and so we went to church every Saturday. And as I got older, I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, I feel like we're, we all could be gods. Like we're all like individually, we could be a God. Like we might be experiencing this, this world on a different idea. Like it's so far above what I think that I could understand. And so I think that there's some kind of higher power, but I don't know enough about it. And I can't say one religion's better than another. Okay. I'm like, who am I to say that my God is the one and theirs is, and not? Theirs is not? There's so yeah. many different religions. I'm like, I don't think I know more than anyone about that. And so. I respect everyone's religion, everyone's opinion. I don't think I'm right and they're wrong. And most things I don't. Being accused of making disgusting comments for views. And I can't believe he said that. Yeah, sometimes the truth hurts. And I think there's a lot of reasons for this. First and foremost, he's an older gentleman with older type beliefs. If they're posting thirst trap photos, what do you think they're getting in the DMs? You see a girl with a bunch of half naked photos. Oh, you're so sexy. You're so 
hot. You're so fine. I'll make you mine. I can't wait to cook books out of you. It's so amazing. Oh, you're single now? Oh, I want to cook books all over your face. So you're thinking, oh, it's 2024. Women can do whatever they want. It's empowering. No, it's not. It's literally doing the exact opposite. One of the things I don't like about Greg is mostly the thing I don't like in anybody, which is assuming they have the answer for all people. To be fair, content creators who are black and white and do make prescriptions tend to build larger audiences here on the platform. People want to be told how to think. They do want to leader. And Greg does a really good job of being very black and white. No, I don't think men have more self-esteem issues than women. I think this is what's actually happened. Women on average think that they're as attractive as the best looking man they've been with. But remember, women are the gatekeepers for sex. I'm sorry to say it, but it's true. Now on this channel, we do try to get away from black and white thinking. Even though I do get accused of being a black and white speaker, which I am, I want to talk about the difference. I can't tell, is Greg a black and white speaker or thinker or both? I got really hooked on that Jubilee bit that you get, that you did. That went viral. That was crazy. First of all, who was the who was the tan guy who uh, I, I think he made quite an ass of himself? That was Myron from Fresh and Fit, who me and Myron think a lot alike and he gets a lot of hate. But what he does, which is different for me, is I think he's trying to instill hate on purpose. Yeah. Like he'll say, you're a fat piece of shit. You yeah. can lose weight if you want. I'll say, you're morbidly obese and you can lose weight if you want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I don't hate you for being obese. I'm just saying I'm trying to empower you. You, you have the ability to lose weight if you want to. Yeah. He's basically like, no, you're a lazy piece of shit. I'm like... No, you're choosing not to exercise. You're choosing this and you could lose weight if you want. So there's yeah. two different ways of expressing. I am definitely a black and white speaker. I speak in very black and white terms. I know my values and I adhere to them. But that does not mean I'm a black and white thinker. I don't actually think the whole world should be like me. I don't think what works for me will work for you. I don't think it's necessary to be thin or fat. I don't think you're obligated to be healthy. What I think is that you should try to be your best. And I think you should try to live within your joy, which takes a lot of discipline. And I would never ask anyone to shoot for that goal. I like that Greg wants people to be better. I do disagree with his methods. I'm more of a hands-off kind of person. I like to use real people to have larger conversations. So I'm covering Greg right now to have a larger conversation about what it means to speak and communicate. And is black and white thinking any better than black and white speaking? Or are they the same thing? I think they are very different. And it really comes down to whether or not you think your way of living could be a prescription for the rest of the world. Keep in mind that world is billions and billions of people. Assuming that your prescription is good for all of those people is kind of taking away the nuance and individuality of all those people. So on my channel, I do try to do a hands-off approach, which is like very critical, very black and white speaking. I'm very clear about my values, but I know that what works for me might not work for you. You know, it's funny after having this whole conversation with you, I feel like you're a little bit misunderstood. I think everyone's misunderstands yeah. my but message. Yeah, but they yeah. only see snippets of my videos. And I'm speaking from that perspective because mm. I've seen, obviously I've seen videos you, you know, you talk about me, I'll watch some stuff or someone will send me like a clip or something. Yeah. And, uh, but what you're saying, like the, the bulk of it now sitting and having this conversation with you is like, oh, it's all super accurate and it's good information. I you're try doing, to always good. speak. I don't lie. So that see, I, it's not hard to be honest when you just don't lie. Like, so when I'm making videos, I'm just giving my honest opinion and saying stuff. And then if you don't like it, that's fine, but I'm not lying. So a lot of people call me a liar, which is very annoying because I'm like, I'm not lying. Like, how do I convince you that? So I can't. So when people say I'm lying about my HRT dose, I'm like, but like I have every video saying of all my cycles. And if I was on a cycle right now, I would tell you because it would get a lot of views. Hey, guess what? I'm back on trend. That's a great video. If I was yeah. actually, so why would I lie about it now? I don't see the incentive. So when I talk about Nadir, it's, I'm giving you my opinion and I'm saying why I believe that to be true. And I think I'm helping people. Like, that's why I do it. Like they might think, oh no, it's just to make money. Of course I wanna make money, that's part of it, but I'm yeah. not lying to make that money. And so let's watch the video so that I can prove, that's right, prove every last one of you who watches this video is gonna know that I never lied and that they did. While I was learning about Greg and his dramas, I found the drama went past differences of opinions and some real feelings seem to have been hurt. How do you feel? I, I, I have my feelings about that. Send your a blood work to Greg Doucette. It's not a doctor. Why am I sending my blood work to someone just because? And so Johnny is bringing back the fact that when he was claiming to be 100% natural, made a video talking about it, that I said, all you need to do is to send me your blood work and then I can make a video talking about it. And so they're saying, yeah, you're not a doctor, but guess what? Why didn't you send it to Derek More Plates More Dates? Guys like Mike O'Hearn who do not show their blood work apparently ever, they claim to be 100% natural, but yet we doubt them. Of course we do. Shouldn't we? Friendships ended. 
I know for certain that at least Johnny knows that I'm not like. Remember, Johnny and I used to be very good friends. Alliances formed. I met Sam Sulek. I asked him personally, does it bother you the videos that I've made about you? I really want to know because after all, Fuad has been saying for months how much he hates the videos I make about him. As I was flexing with Sam Sulek, we're having a moment, we're meeting each other for the first time. Fuad Adiyad, he tries to ruin it. He walks by and literally says this, how can you take photos with a guy who talks garbage about you all the time? Fuad walks away and I hear, I don't know what that's all about. And so imagine that Fuad has to go and spoil it for everyone. If Sam Sulik has something to say about me, he can say it to me face to face, one on one. And so I specifically asked him, do my videos bother you? Do you know what he said? He said, when you made that video about me for the first time, I knew at that moment that I had made it in the fitness industry. When I saw the first Greg Doucette video, I'm like, all right, now I finally made it. And accusations of lying started to sprout from people whose content I had even enjoyed. In real life, he doesn't talk like that. The voice is fake at all. I don't think there's a real Greg Doucette anywhere in there, man. It's facades all the way down. He says there's no real Greg Doucette in there at all. I've said countless times that I yell and scream because it gets more attention, more views. People remember me. Oftentimes people have said I sound like the parrot from Aladdin. That I'm Gilbert Godfrey, God bless his soul, but on steroids. And so I make it no secret that I do this on purpose because I know it's going to make my videos more memorable and get more views. But then I started to wonder, what if Greg never lied? He says he never lied. And what if they did? What if the same people on the internet who had more subscribers and a better reputation were actually the liars and Greg was innocent? It's facades all the way down. It just depends on what he has to be for the situation at the time. I find it extremely ironic that what Mike Isretel is saying about me is literally a projection of what I do believe these two people are in this video. Is Greg's personality, attitude, and branding the problem? Or is he the problem? And does this make him less of a bully? Remember, Johnny and I used to be very good friends. I'm saying used to be. He, without a doubt, knows that I do not want to talk to him. So I'm not going to show the text messages, but you probably remember when he went and approached me at the Olympia. Do you really think I wanted to be in his video? Of course not. But he comes and approaches me with his camera woman, and she's looking at me, and I'm looking at her, and I know that she knows there's no way I want to be in this video. But yet, he doesn't care. I started to wonder if Greg Doucette was Lindsay Lohan, and the other fitness gurus told him he couldn't sit with them anymore. Well, they're not. An example is Greg Doucette. At various times, calls himself Dr. Greg. He's not a doctor. If, like, cheating at every sport you ever played makes you a doctor, dope. I got eight PhDs in that case. <laughs> Greg, in fact, has a shirt saying, I'm not a doctor. Literally, I've been saying it for years. From day one, I said, listen, I am no doctor. Not your doctor. I am not a doctor. Not a doctor. I am not a doctor. Zero doctor. Let me remind everyone, I am not a doctor. Before I get into that, I need to remind you, I am not a doctor. It's kind of hard to know what's happening. In some ways, these people are so much older, and so you would assume there would be a level of maturity. And at the same time, because they're content creators like the rest of us, maybe that's just not true. Maybe because you create content, you stay a little bit young and maybe even slightly immature. Clearly shows he rarely watched any of my videos. He doesn't like me. This is apparent. But yet when I had Mike on my channel, he had no problem with me. He agreed with many of the things we're saying. We spoke and saw eye to eye. If Bradley Martin is hanging out with Sneeko and Dr. Mike is gossiping about Greg Doucette, I'm not really sure that the maturity levels are that high. All right, guys, I'm here with Greg <laughs> Doucette. How do you like the impression? Is he doing good? Ah! Ah! And it begs the question, are these people on YouTube just a bunch of grown-ups with money and muscles, or are they people we should look at as leaders? And is being a bully just a part of the expectation when you're a content creator? The conversation I wanna have that's kind of bigger around Greg is where does he fall on the spectrum of sort of bully to not bully? I think Myron Gaines, who Greg has actually done a collaboration with, is sort of a good example of like a bully. Shame is what led me to an eating disorder Who's when that, what though? we're looking for is Who's stability. Is that? That's your it's, fault. It's See, the problem is that you're professional. Victim. He says he's helping people, but it's really through a lot of pain, hurt, and trauma. And it's pretty clear that Myron is dealing with some stuff. So I would say he's the worst of the worst. And then let's say there's like a Andrew Tate, Myron are kind of in the same spectrum-y bubble. When you put a shirt on, you do your little buttons up. You don't want anyone to look at you. Don't want to show your fucking little shitty ass 
flabby chest. And then there's like a Greg Doucette, who's like a little bit more healed, but also still traumatized. When I first started doing these videos, I literally had to get in an anger zone. Like I had to be like, <laughs> Okay, I gotta get mad. I gotta really hate this guy because I don't really. Yeah. And I'm like, I gotta like just feel it. Like I'm gonna do this video on this guy and he said this. I'm like, ah, and I'm just like yelling. And then the comments are like, wow, this is so entertaining. You're so passionate. I'm like, all right, I gotta keep that up. And so every video, the more controversy I could get or the more angry I got, the more views I got. And I'm like, I gotta keep it going. So like, I, I wish it wasn't that way. I wish it wasn't. People were so enamored by negativity and drama and then maybe past greg we get a little bit more nuanced and maybe it's like coach mike how does that make you feel that i'm sexually attracted to you um it was inappropriate you can leave now and then maybe past him it goes a little bit more optimistic and positive and like more healed maybe like a lean beef patty or jesse james west anime characters are known for wearing weighted clothes to gain superhuman strength and today i'm joined by lean beef patty to see what it's like to wear them for the next 24 hours are you ready yes let's go there are so many fitness people on the internet and I love so many of them. And a lot of them overlap with one another. And there's a lot of drama and infighting, which to be fair, adulthood is high school with money. So I understand. With that said, I'm not so convinced that Greg is 1000% a bully, but I do think he's bully adjacent, which means that he tends to love people in the worst way possible because of how he says things. Now being a neurodivergent queen myself who has black and white speak, I often do fall into a category of person that maybe doesn't say it in the best way possible. So my heart kind of goes out to Greg in this way, but yet it stops because the one thing that I do that I don't notice Greg doing is I change. I'm not perfect at it and I'm definitely still working on it. I've absolutely tried to change my language to be more acceptable, to be more digestible. I think the important lesson we can take from Greg's lived experience is that he doesn't often pay attention to who he's speaking to. And to be fair, on the internet, it's very hard to know who's listening to you. I run into this problem, you run into this problem. Everybody, even Hassan Piker, who has had a battle with Greg in the past, even Hassan, when he says things that are controversial. You're on the list because you said that stuff about 9-11. Well, you just found out about that. I just found out about it. Literally and, uh, earlier in the fucking day, like yeah. an hour ago on my stream. That's right. And uh, you put me on the fucking list. America deserved 9-11, mm -hmm. dude. So uh, there we go. No, we already no, got it clipped out. That was me. I did say that. I feel like I kind of get where he's coming from, but I can see why it upsets some people because we don't know who's listening to us. There's a content creator named Johnny Shrev who actually has a past association with Greg, and he kind of covered this perfectly while reviewing a controversy that Greg was recently in. Greg, you said now being banned from judging in the CPA, which is the Canadian Physique Alliance. What Greg said, now for me, it's not a matter of right or wrong. It's how he said it and when he said it. That's the big difference. Because when I watched his video, I was like, I was like, what are you? I was like, oh my God, I'm like, don't, 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 don't. When I used to live with Greg, I wouldn't say I pleased his posts, but I would definitely engage in some of the posts he would make on Facebook and have to like tell him that's not the way I would say that. And here's the thing. Smash, all of them are smash. So how are we picking the best bikini girl? You're not picking them by who you would smash. That is the problem. You cannot sit there and take a video and think that every woman on that stage or every single bikini girl is gonna be okay with you saying, yeah, how are you gonna, how are you gonna, how are you gonna judge this thing, man? Like smash. And ultimately his message makes so much sense to my brain, which is to say, pay attention to your audience. We are at the end of the day, entertainers and content creators and commentary channels that have audiences. Now my audience is 70% women and mostly LGBTQ people or people interested in philosophy and introspection. And the way that they are motivated is probably more similar to how I'm motivated since I'm the one making the content and attracting this audience. So they're probably more similar to me than let's say a Greg, but Greg's audience is probably more similar to him. Even recently, Think Before You Sleep, another controversial health content creator, commentary channel as well made a commentary video about Alyssa who is an autistic commentary channel who also made a video about her health journey and if you guys were paying attention to that it was a mess I have a video about that links down below and that if you're making lifestyle changes to be more in shape you might not make much progress your first month because you're just being introduced to fitness and healthy eating and it takes time to build the correct habits that will lead you to what you want that being said not all personal trainers are created the same personal training has a really high turnover rate because it's primarily a sales job and because it's a sales job most personal trainers are new and they suck this trainer is all over the place with the exercise recommendations that she's giving Alyssa. She's like wasting time lifting two pound weights, then doing yoga, then a rowing machine, then a leg press, all without enough weekly time dedicated to each activity to build proficiency. Alyssa, did she specifically sit you down and ask you what you wanted? That's what a good trainer is supposed to do. Cons 
Yeah, he just like bullies to teach, which I bully sometimes too. I pick and choose when I bully. Yeah, he's just kind of um, annoying. But it was a very controversial moment on the internet and Think Before You Sleep ended up getting a strike on his account because of it. Because at the end of the day, though he was trying to help Alyssa, it drove thousands of his fans to her videos to basically bully her. And they showed up on my video as well. So when I think about Greg Doucette, I do consider, is he like Think Before You Sleep? Is Greg's audience gonna come on this video and leave me a bunch of mean comments? Or are they gonna be a community that says, hey, Brittany thinks how she thinks, no big deal. And Greg thinks how he thinks, no big deal. Well, I kind of doubt it. I kind of assume I'm gonna get a lot of comments from his fans, but hey, maybe I'm wrong. Now, with all of this said, I want you to remember that Think Before You Sleep and Greg Doucette do want good things for people. The road to hell is paved in good intentions and they're really good examples of it. Look, I wanna help people as well, I just do it differently. I saw a comment thanks to the video I made on Think Before You Sleep on my video that said, Brittany, thanks to you, I ended up wanting to work out more. And I think that's a beautiful sentiment from somebody in my audience that I appreciate Appreciate. But they said that when they watched Think Before You Sleep, it made them want to binge eat. When I watch Greg Doucette, it makes me want to eat my feelings because he hurts my feelings. Now, he's not even talking to me and it's not really about me or my direct feelings, but the way he talks just feels like demoralizing. That's because of the brain I have versus the brain he has. I'm assuming the people that love Greg love that type of motivation and end up hitting the gym because of it versus somebody like me, it's just not gonna work. So why do I get up and work out every day? Well, because it improves my health and I look pretty good on my Instagram. There's lots of reasons we all do this, right? Whether they're superficial or for health reasons. But how how you're motivated to do these things is dependent on your brain, which is why I don't make prescriptions for all people. What works for Greg and his audience isn't gonna work for me or mine. So if you watch Greg's content and it makes you hit the gym, that's beautiful. If you watch my content and it makes you hit the gym, that's beautiful. But your journey is your own and you gotta do it at your own pace. If I'm bullied, if I'm pressured, I'm just gonna reject that pressure and sit on my butt and not do anything. I either have to do it purely for myself or I have to have somebody near me who's encouraging me to be my best. I think that's why I love anime boys who go to the gym because anime guys who also go to the gym tend to be some of the most positive, uplifting people I've ever met. And they just make me feel so good about myself. They make me feel like I'm going to reach a power level so big, so intense that Vegeta and Goku are going to feel threatened. I feel great. And I want to hang out with that kind of energy. I actually love Jesse James West as an example of a really positive, uplifting, kind attitude. Yeah. Pull up. We're going to do as many as we possibly can. I'm assuming it's not going to... I'm not gonna be that much. The exercises started off ridiculously easy. Level 20, one arm push-ups. Goku did this and Zora. <laughs> Funny enough, him and Greg also did a collab together. Welcome to the game of Natty or Not with Greg Doucette. Let's go. Happy to be a contestant. I'm gonna read you a description of the person. You're gonna tell me if they're natural or if they're not natural. Got this. Not Natty, Natty. No, 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 these are, these are stick figures, Greg. Oh, I thought I had it. So even though Greg is kind of known as a bully, he also knows everybody I like on the internet that I consider definitely not a bully. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see all the girls I follow who do fitness. I want to feel uplifted, not demoralized. I am motivated by optimism but people like Greg are fully convinced that them belittling their audience and belittling people is their way to motivate. From day one, I did the opposite of what I thought I should do. And it always worked. I literally call all my subs morons. I'm like, you guys are a bunch of freaking morons. What's wrong with you? are a bunch of idiots. You're so stupid. And they were eat it up. The more insulting I was, the louder I yelled, the more I talked with my parrot from Aladdin voice, the more <laughs> I got all in their faces. I'll never I'll they loved it. I will say, even if you look at his channel, He'll often say like, oh, I need to be this way. I need to be this way because this is views. This is clickbait. This is how people watch my videos. What, as far as content goes, are you going to keep making sort of uh, commentary content? Or are you going to like change it up? Commentary comment, like watching a video and reacting to it? Yeah, so yeah. I, I, that's like my bread and butter, reactionary yeah. content. So people are like, why don't you bring back the old videos? I'm like watching today and I'm like, okay, I posted this video training techniques and a whole thing. And then they're like, yeah, bring it back. Yeah, finally. And I'm like, it's got 9,000 views. No Four hours. It. Like, yeah, yeah. what are you guys even talking about? Like, this is the worst video of the week. Yeah. No one's watching it. Why am I going to post videos that you don't want to watch? So they'll say they want this, but then I'll post it and they don't want it. They think they want. So it's just like a girl. Like, you have to, they might say they think they want something. It's no, they want you to be the the leader, the, the you know, the alpha, um, very masculine. Then if you change for a woman, she's going to dump you for the guy that didn't change. But if you look at Jesse James West or Chris Heria versus a Greg Doucette, they're killing the numbers versus Greg. And I think it's because Greg's attitude, though helpful to some people for a short amount of time, is sort of 
negative. And nobody likes a negative Nancy. Some things that Greg says are absolutely true and absolutely real and absolutely good. I just think it's the way that he's speaking that's just a little much for people. So all of this to say, is Greg Doucette a bully? Well, maybe not as much as Myron, but I think he's still there. And I think it's because of his level of health to trauma ratio. He literally talks about his trust issues. I've had the worst experiences with relationships, probably why I've done um, so much reading on it since then. In my last relationship, I have an NDA. I'm not even allowed to talk about it. You have an NDA from your last girl? She yes. made you sign an NDA? No, I made I made the signing of it happen because I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm not, I don't trust anything. I don't trust women anymore in terms of relationships and breakup because they lie, they say anything. Yeah. I have no trust in that in that sense. The man has trust issues with platonic and romantic past friends and partners. What about business wise? Have you ever had any up situations there? I haven't really had business situations. I mean, I mean, yeah. I had lent my money. I lent my, this guy, Francis Lander, I may as well name drop him, you <laughs> whole. Lent $23,500 ended up being, like this is from 2004. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm feeling bad for him, I'm helping out. It's my best, best now, friend, yeah. you know, back, yeah. you know, it's my, like one of my best friends, living with me for years. And so this guy, he, he leaves his kid and his wife, moves up north, buys like a $50,000 vehicle, doesn't pay me back. I, I sue him in court. I win, but because he then declares bankruptcy, so I don't get any of this money. Then he buys a house like a couple hundred meters from where I grew up with this girl, and it's like in her name, so I can't do anything about it. So this is like the trust level I have of people. I'm very trusting, and I'm like, you know, I've, I've lent people so, like money my whole life. So I'm this really trusting guy because I'm like, I would give you like, I just yeah. you figure other people would act like That's you. That's the problem. He's 48 years old and he's still admitting that he's struggling, which I think is a beautiful thing to see. He, Greg is very forthcoming with his issues, which I think is beautiful, but I think he's also in denial of how they're influencing and impacting his content creation and his communication style. I mean, I think if we're being transparent here, even the things that I still have to work on in terms of my communication style are rooted in sort of a little bit of trauma. I mean, if we're being honest, it's my desire to be authentic authentically myself, but then to remember that I am a public figure and I am a content creator and this is my job full time. And I have to change how I talk sort of authentically in private because I'm not in private, I'm in public and I don't know who's listening to me and I need to be considerate of that. And I think a part of me as a kid, as a queer kid who tried so hard to be herself for her whole life in a bubble that didn't accept me fully, I think there's a part of me that doesn't wanna be silenced. And I feel like this little kid who's still trapped in a bubble sometimes, but the truth is, is this is a working bubble. This is my job. I have to be professional. And I think this is the lesson we can learn here. I'm still young and I can still change my ways. And I think Greg is still young in his own way and he can change his ways. But gosh, I don't want to be the 48 year old on the internet who's still trying to be edgy. And I think that's the question Greg has to ask himself. Why are you trying so hard to be edgy? And I think a part of it is that he is trying to own himself. I just think we forget as content creators, like we're still at work and we're still doing a job. And so we have to be professional. And I know YouTube sets this illusion of authenticity that they sell to the audience is like, I'm the real one. I'll tell you how it is. Maybe I should be more considerate about the words I use, especially in a space where anybody could end up hearing me. And then at the end of the day, still adhere to sort of your values and your principles, which I think is really important. You know, I speak in a way that doesn't compute to all people. I'll say things like gender is a construct. Well, that's not going to make sense to all people if I say gender is a construct. I'm not going to stop saying it. But at the same time, I might be more aware that somebody might hear it and not know what it means. Or maybe they think it know they know what it means, but they're wrong. It's like we have to pick and choose our battles. And sometimes I think Greg forgets to pick and choose his battles. So to all the people that love Greg, I see why you love him. But do you also see why he's a little bit of a bully? And then you have to ask yourself, how do you feel about that as a consumer? And don't get me wrong. I don't mind when a bully bullies a bully. But at the end of the day, is this really what we want for society? I don't know. You can figure it out. Because I know for me, it's really difficult when I see somebody that I want to bully because, oh, they're being a bully. But I also know like, man, how do I just learn to understand them instead. And to be honest with you, even though I've watched so many of Greg's videos at this point, and I feel like I understand him better, sometimes I still want to bully him a little bit, but mostly because of the way he bullies other people. And so maybe it's just a continuing cycle after all. I really appreciate Greg's transparency. I won't subscribe anytime soon, but I can understand why people in my life like his content. With that said, the bigger conversation here is for all of us. What does it mean to black and white think versus black and white speak? And what does it mean when we're pushing our ideals onto other people? How do we know they're good for other people and not just for us. And then of course, the most important part of this conversation is how do I learn to speak better so more people understand me while still understanding that no matter how well I speak, somebody will always misunderstand me. Stop.
my head in real life while in bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed, so why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da,